Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Peluso, and uh, this is astronomy modeling instruction with exoplanets and the Unistellar Telescope Network. So cosmic curiosity, this is something that's inherent in our evolutionary roots. Some researchers have shown that ancient star explosions could have maybe even inspired our ancestors to walk upright. Now whether that's true or not, it is true that we've wondered at our place in the cosmos for millennia. Do those stars in our sky have planets around them, like Earth? We ventured further, and eventually we left the planet and set sail for the stars. Some might call this our anti-accretion moment. And today, the U.S. is poised to lead the space industry. I have a question for you. Was astronomy offered as a course at your high school? If it was, please raise your hand. Okay, so it's like the minority views is what I commonly see when I ask groups. Why is that? Well, a potential answer comes about 130 years ago when a group called the Committee of Ten met and decided what the college admission requirements should be for our high schools. They opted for the biology, chemistry, and physics sequence, or BCP. What are the effects of BCP? Well, the most recent census of uh, the prevalence of astronomy in our U.S. high schools comes from 2007. We see 12%, only 12% of U.S. high schools reported offering, offering astronomy. As of 2019, we see that 97% of U.S. high school graduates have completed biology, 76% chemistry, and 40% physics. A more global study happened in 2021, and it showed that only 17% of K-12 curricula offered astronomy uh, courses around the world. What about teacher qualifications? Well, most U.S. high school physical, earth, and space and science teachers are teaching out in the field, meaning they have no background in that subject. And at our U.S. community colleges, 88% of students are taking astronomy from instructors with no formal training there. But what's the need for astronomy education? U.S. space industry jobs are growing 55% higher than they were a decade ago, and U.S. jobs in STEM, especially in the space industry, may go unfulfilled because of a supply problem. But I think even more importantly, astronomy and space science is a gateway to science. It's intrinsic to our nature. We're made out of star stuff. We want to know our cosmic origins and why we are here. We see this in our movies. The next news article about the asteroid that might hit Earth. <laughs> The front page of the New York Times, which is this James Webb Space Telescope image. But what about those UFOs? Or exoplanets? Exoplanets are just planets around other stars. And it turns out that, on average, there's at least one exoplanet for every star in our galaxy. Think about this the next time you look up at the stars at night. Does that star have an exoplanet? Could that planet have intelligent life on it. These are things that excite our students. So how can we do this? How can we place these exciting things in an engaging and data-driven astronomy course at our U.S. schools, colleges, and universities? Well, first, we can utilize a very effective way to learn science, something called modeling instruction. So at over 20 years of National Science Foundation support, in uh, modeling classrooms, we have uh, modelers, and there's over 20,000 of them. In a modeling classroom, teachers act as a guide on the side, not a stage on the stage. In a modeling classroom, students build, refine, and apply the fundamental conceptual models that form the content core of the discipline. As you can see, the students are currently teaching in the bottom right-hand corner. Those are high school astrophysics students modeling the orbit of a comet from unistellar citizen science data that they perform photometry on. Yes, my students are aliens. <laughs> We also see a modeling instruction that improves out-of-field teacher self-efficacy, motivation, and confidence. Will this work for astronomy? I have to take you back to the 1990s briefly and tell you about a project that Dr. Carl Pienhacker started called Global Hands-On Universe. This idea was to give students and teachers access to remote robotic telescopes and to teach teachers and students how to do the same skills that professional astronomers do. So such an exciting and novel idea that it caught the attention of Carl Sagan. He said that he strongly supported the idea and even wanted to participate, but just didn't have the time. So what we did is we combined the Global Hands-On Universe project with modeling instruction 
to create the first ever astronomy model instruction workshop in 2019. We revised that further, called it astronomy modeling with exoplanets. And in the astronomy modeling with exoplanets teacher workshop, there are four units, space around Earth, motion and forces, light, evolution of the universe, and search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And this teachers and students do exoplanet observation planning, they work with real astronomical images, such as Fitz Files. They do image processing, differential photometry, astrometry, and they even create exoplanet transit light curves. And the animation in the bottom right, that's an exoplanet transit light curve. This happens when an exoplanet blocks out some of that starlight from the star from our perspective. Teachers and students use telescopes from the Harvard DIY Planet Search, Micro Observatory, Blas Kubrick's Observatory, and Unistellar Enhanced Vision Telescopes, or EV scopes. Unistellar EV scopes are highlighted. These are novel technology and it allows us to change how we do science and education. They're small digital smart telescopes that are easy to use with a smartphone application. And beyond just being able to see past our light pollution and make beautiful images of our deep space objects, you can actually do science with these. So students can learn by actually being involved in real science. And it's a global network. I highlight now a research study um, a research that we've done with exoplanets called the Unistellar Exoplanet Campaign. In my team, I've updated the orbital parameters of test exoplanets with 163 citizen scientists from 21 countries with over 1,000 exoplanet observations. In this paper and the publications of the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, it showed the benefits of unistellar citizen science for exoplanet research, but also the inherent education opportunities. 163 citizen scientists as co-authors, that included teachers and students. Now back to the research study. This was an intervention with teachers. 15 weeks, we collected quantitative data, qualitative data, from 14 out-of-field U.S. high school astronomy teachers. We had a case study with 19 public high school astronomy students. One of their teachers was given the Unistellar EV scope. We investigated the effects of competence, motivation, engagement, and self-efficacies for teacher and students. For our results, qualitatively, in our interviews, from one of the teachers, he said, every time I show students something, I'm like, God, this is this is real? We're not just reading about a planet textbook? Real stuff that astronomers are doing right now. I will say very clearly that this workshop has increased my enthusiasm to teach astronomy from one of the high school students. Oh, this exoplanet data is real? Data that's happening right now, and not just something that was discovered 50 years ago? Learning about more current events, being able to understand that data was really exciting. I found it wasn't too complicated. I want to know more about exoplanets. And from our quantitative data, we found significant increases in both teacher and student astronomy concept knowledge and improved teacher self-efficacy. I highlight two more things here. First, currently in peer review with the Astronomical Journal, we report the discovery and confirmation of the warm and dense sub-Saturn exoplanet, TIC 139270665b. We love to name these planets. Very easy to remember names, don't we? In the paper, we have 16 co-authors who are high school students. They use unistellar EV scopes in an overnight event that I organized with the Shadow Space and Science Center here in Oakland, California. It's a life-changing experience for them. Finally, I'll highlight action research currently being done with a small public charter high school in Vallejo, California, Griffin Academy High School. You can see one of their modeling instruction model so far boards and some of the exoplanet models on the board. But what's really impressive and which relates to our exoplanet work is how one of my high school students just this semester used a unistellar telescope to capture the transit of Cutter 1D. But, and this is in support of a program, NASA's Exoplanet Watch. So just hundreds of years ago, there was just a few of us astrologers, as we were called back then. And we've grown to thousands of us, but today in the 2020s, there's over 8 billion of us with new technology. It might be a new astronomy revolution. In summary, this teacher research has shown that out-of-field teachers gain self-efficacy, motivation, and change their teacher, change their teaching. Teachers and students in astrophysics like the professionals. We can democratize astronomy and science with new technology, such as with interstellar EV scopes, and education initiatives where students learn science by doing science. This can also advance scientific research. This proof of concept can rigor the BCP status quo and inspire a hopeful future for something I like to call Astro Remix, 
astrophysics research, mesoeducation. Thank you.